right now at 6. State investigators say changes made to the seats on this iDrive amusement ride led to a 14-year-old's death. The operator of the Orlando Drop Tower made manual adjustments to the ride, resulting in it being unsafe. Investigators told us today the gap between the shoulder harness and Tyree Sampson's seat was more than double what it was for other riders. You can see seat one there. There's how wide the gap is. This is the other seat, and you can see the gap is much more narrow. Good evening. I'm Greg Warman. And I'm Martha Sagowski. Again, you can see right here in the seat closest to me how much larger the gap was. Channel 9's Felicia Ashley is live right now at Icon Park. And Felicia, investigators now say ride operators had made changes to that seat sometime before the deadly accident. That is what we learned from that report. We read through every single page and we learned that in this investigation, they learned that someone at some time before Tyree Sansom got on that seat made an adjustment and that's what played a part in that 14 year old's death. The report confirms that manual adjustments have been made to the sensor for the seat in question that allowed the harness to restrain opening to be almost double that of the normal restraint. The seat in question, seat number one, where 14-year-old Tyree Sampson was sitting in March. I don't believe that the department would issue a permit. The report from the forensic engineers hired by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services shows the ride operator created a 7.19 inch opening on Tyree's seat. The average is in between two and four inches. I am concerned with any operator that makes adjustments after an inspection and after a permit uh, is issued. Representative Geraldine Thompson plans to file the Tyree Sampson bill to make sure no one loses their life like this again. My understanding it was seat one and seat two only that were adjusted and presumably to allow for larger riders, which should not have, have happened. During the investigation announcement Monday, Commissioner Nikki Freed would not answer how long after the ride inspection and how far ahead before Tyree was seated, the adjustments were made. As our investigation now enters into the next phase of how and why it occurred, as we look towards potential penalties. Freed and Thompson did tell us that Samson's family was the first to know about the updates in this investigation. And I want to show you that this mural that has been left here, or rather this memorial that has been left here, continues to grow behind me, or rather in front of me, are still larger crowds growing to show the support for Samson as well as his family. For now, reporting live from Icon Park, Felicia Ashley, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, Felicia, thank you. In the last two hours, we also spoke with Michael Haggard. He is the attorney for Tyree Sampson's family. He says the Orlando free fall should have never been built or even allowed to operate once it was. Channel 9's Nick Pampantonis continues our team coverage live in studio. And Nick, you talk with him and the family attorney told you this is now possibly turning into what a criminal case. And he says this is a dangerous ride that was made even worse by those adjustments. He told me a fall like this was inevitable. It shocks me that companies can be this irresponsible. Sitting in his Coral Gables office, attorney Michael Haggard railed against every group of people who he said contributed to Tyree Sampson's death. The ride manufacturer, the ride owner, and Icon Park itself. It's one of the most dangerous in the world, and it came without seatbelts. It came without a harness belt. He came without any secondary layer of protection to protect anyone. And after the revelation that seats had been adjusted to fit passengers over the ride's weight limit, Haggard saying the case could become criminal. You're starting to get into intentional behavior that likely leads to tragedy, which is exactly what happened to Tyree. Haggard said he would allow the facts of the investigation to lead him down whatever path he takes. He has so far only ruled out going after the teenage ride operators on duty that night. More importantly, he says his client's actions will also be about preventing another death. She wants justice in this case, but more importantly, wants uniform standards that this can never happen again and adding tight restrictions to these types of rides. Mother obviously disturbed by the comments. He says adjustments like the one that happened in this case are not common and should never be made. Greg? All right, Nick, thank you. And late this afternoon, we got this statement from Slingshot, which owns the ride. It says in part, quote, Orlando Slingshot has fully cooperated with the state during the initial phase of its investigation, and we will continue to do so until it has officially concluded. 
They went on to say that all protocols, procedures, and safety measures provided by the manufacturer of the ride were followed. Meantime, Icon Park, where that free fall ride operates and still stands tonight, also released a statement saying this, that it was deeply troubled by the state's findings, adding, quote, Icon Park is committed to providing a safe, fun experience for families. We will continue to support the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services with its ongoing investigation. We've been following this tragedy since it happened last month, and you can count on us to continue to follow every new development, both on air and online, at WFTV.com.